Stevens. Please welcome to the stage, memoirized political comedian, the Trevor Noah of my heart personally. It's the incredible Dulce Sloan. Yeah. Hello. Is this thing on? Oh, thank you so much. Is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. Okay, we've got something happening. Something's here. happening. Hi, how you Hola. doing? Good to see you. Hola. How is everyone? <laughs> Hola. We did it. Good to see you again. The last time I saw you in person was at Radio City Music Hall well, that's in where we 2019. Went. Oh, with Stacey Abrams. With Stacey Abrams. I met her so many times. Okay. Watch your feet, everybody. I'm sorry? <laughs> the names are dropping. You know that? <laughs> oh, no, I was just because I couldn't remember. I was like, I know we were in a big place, but where were we? I truly could not remember Radio, Radio City, City Music, Music Hall. Hall. We did it right before the pandemic. It was like uh, in the end of 2019. Ooh. Got it under the water. Before the panty dropper. Okay. That's right. <laughs> now, uh, you co-hosted The Bald and the Beautiful with Trixie Mattel this week. Were you thinking, let's knock out all the white gays in one week? What's... Well, listen, the white gays have done so much for my people. Um, <laughs> but also, we've done so much for y'all. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, how would you say girl, if not for us? Because um, we be like, girl, girl. Girl, girl, ah, yes. So, <laughs> but I, it's, I love, I love Trixie. I'm a huge fan of hers. So I was very excited that I got to do it. Cause she's like, I'm so glad you're here. I was like, I'm so glad you're here. And that was the first 45 minutes of the podcast. Uh, was us just not understanding how the other one was there, but it was really great. It was an inspiration. Cause like her whole like condo is like her studio. And I was like, okay, all right. Next level of success. <laughs> got it. Now, you've also been nominated for a GLAAD Award for your Daily Show interview with Sasha Colby. Yes, mother! Uh, I am now a member of the House of Colby. You're welcome. Now, um, this show hasn't been nominated, uh, despite Why the fact not? that we've had path-breaking segments like, Would You Fuck This Ghost? and Would You Fuck This Alien? Which I think were both uh, very um, gla queer. L listen, as a black person, um, I must tell you, like, because people really wonder about, like, do black people believe in ghosts? We definitely do. <laughs> so we don't fuck with them. Right. Uh, as a rule, if we know they're somewhere, we don't go there. Uh, it is a known real estate fact that if you tell black people a house is haunted, we don't even want to see a picture of that fucking house. <laughs> well, you should, I don't give a fuck who's in there. Unless it's the Holy Ghost, I'm not going. Give a fuck. You're talking about, yeah, we don't fuck with ghosts. Aliens? Yeah, we believe in them. But you know, listen, if you're gonna be in, don't come, aliens, if you can hear me, don't come. Oh, you don't want them to come? I think that'd be no. so interesting. White people would kill them. Right, no, for sure. Yes! I uh, know, I, but I mean, right, but, but, but if they got here, they're probably smart, you know? And they'd maybe, they'd anticipate that because they'd seen all our movies. You know, because the movies got there. Listen, aliens. <laughs> What he's saying is a trick. <laughs> Don't let this white man convince you to land. <laughs> Stay in We're the stars, my friends. Hey, I just think you're like, when have human beings, upon encountering something unfamiliar, ever reacted poorly? <laughs> Why do you think I speak English and live in America? <laughs> right, right. I'm not supposed right. to be here. <laughs> supposed to be in Africa with sandals on. And yet here, <laughs> and yet here you are with a new book. <laughs> Here I am in America being cold. <laughs> you have a new book called Hello Friends Stories of Dating, Destiny, and Day Jobs. Yes. Hey, as someone might, you know, um, dating, pff, it's, it's the best. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's your favorite dating story uh, that's in the book? Well, one of the best boyfriends I ever had was a convicted felon. And <laughs> listen, they'll love you because they're so happy to be on the outside. And. <laughs> He's the nicest, sweetest man. He was giant. His nickname was Baby Suge. And, because I also, I mean, for a long time, had a real heart for Suge Knight. Um, <laughs> hey, man, sometimes you just need a hood-ass dude to be like, how you doing today? I'm like, I'm great, sir. How are you? Because um, you just need to know that, like, if I look at somebody and go, him, you're like, all right, they might not see that dude again. And that's a lot of power to have. And I wilted with responsibility. But I will say this. He, one day... Um, it was my 25th birthday and oh, I just found out me and Lacey have the same birthday. I thought you were going to say boyfriend. No, oh, well, no, that's... no, 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 no. Um, I'm currently single, which is confusing because my titties are amazing and thank you so much. And so <laughs> 
he um for my 25th birthday my mother took me to the newly opened georgia aquarium and everything in there looks delicious and so i told him we were that's what we were doing for my birthday he couldn't come because he had to work one of his many jobs that he was allowed to work as a felon in the state of georgia and he was like an aquarium what's that i said what he said is it like a museum and i was like yeah for fish <laughs> Yo, let me call you back. And then I had to just take a second to figure out if this is the penis that I needed to see again. Because he didn't know what an aquarium was. But technically, he was right. An aquarium is a museum for fish. Yeah, you see what a, I'm saying? It's a museum. I, a right. fish. It's a museum. Right, right. It's I, a living museum. Right. It's What's a zoo. A, I was about to say, zoo is what came to mind for me. Well, I'd say a, muse, a, a museum is a zoo for paintings. When you think about it, and a, and in a, right, more like an arboreum, but okay, yeah. maybe more of a greenhouse for paintings. Right, it's a right, yeah. No, I and then a, a it breaks your brain, doesn't it? Yeah, it breaks your fucking brain because you're sitting and there going, zoo. "Well, what is this? Well, then what is a zoo? Is a, a dry zoo aquarium or or a playground f for elephants? So it's just like right. you don't know. Is it a dry aquarium? Is it? Is it? Like it's just it makes you go, wow. For a man that didn't graduate from high school, you sure have me in a tizzy. <laughs> and it, it didn't work out? Well, no, it, it didn't, um, because he started doing things that were a little illegal again. And I told him, um, in the words of the rapper Monaleo, I ain't holding no nigga down, so bitch, you better not go to jail. Um, I told him, I'm not coming, don't call me, I'm not being helpful. Uh, and the day he told me that he was do, starting to do illegal stuff, uh, he took me to dinner, and then we hung out. And as we were sharing our post coitus cigarette, he was like, hey, I'm kind of doing crime. And I was like, okay, we're breaking up. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I took you to a nice dinner. Where'd you go? What kind of food? Uh, I, when I say nice, that was loose. That was a loose. <laughs> um, that was, it was uh, somewhere that, w that had a weight. But... Um, that's good. That means it's in demand. Wait. If they're gonna make it, people are willing to wait for it. Listen, you can. I waited many times for spinach artichoke joke dip. So um, when I was a kid, my dad used to say, "Nobody goes to Bertucci's. There's always a line." Who's she? Bertucci's. Yes. It was a godforsaken Mexican uh, uh, Italian <laughs> restaurant. Along, I don't know what. <laughs> what a! What, I'm like, wow. New York is wild as shit. <laughs> Bertucci. That there's was, no Mex. I, like I lived in New York. I know there's no Mexicans out there, and they were like, "Hey, we, we're gonna get people in the doors. We need to name this Mexican restaurant after an <laughs> Italian." <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, isn't lasagna just a rolled up enchilada anyway? <laughs> Every yeah, that's what and 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 that's such an important point. Well, I would say right. Manicotti is a taco. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Bertucci's was like an aquarium for pizza. Yes, or just the school of fish. I it's, love aquariums. They're they're wonderful. I do have a story in the book about us going to the Tennessee Aquarium. Um, which is in Chattanooga, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and there is a. Uh, it's very interesting because they have a, um, a. It's like a saltwater tank with all the beautiful fish that you find in the Pacific, and then they have a freshwater exhibit. And I don't know if you've ever seen a fish in a river, but it's brown. Yeah. <laughs> and they had in this particular summer they had a catfish exhibit, and my mama and some country ass white man spent their entire visit plotting on the catfish, <laughs> to the point that. They were almost asked to leave. Because my mom and this country man, he was like, listen, I got some fishing lures in the car. We can figure this out right now. And the girl working there was like, please stop trying to eat our fish. When I, I remember when I was a kid and you'd go to the pet store and you were going to get like a bowl yes. to have one fish in it. You'd walk past these just vibrant, beautiful, Expensive. rainbow, blues, and neon fish which were the saltwater fish, and be like, no, no, no. We don't get a fish from there. Oh. You get to pick a one trout? of these fish, one of these little brown or just a goldfish. You know what I mean? Oh. You don't get the fun fish. The fun fish are the real freaks who are going to like monitor the salt levels. You get a bowl that you clean with a brush, and in that bowl <laughs> goes just one dumb, ugly, forgettable fucking fish that'll be dead in six weeks. That's why you get. That's why betas got so big. Mm. Beta fish, because you're just like, you can just put this fish in tap water. It'll be fine. They had the change. Remember the original name of betas? They were, were Chinese fighting fish. 
Yes. And then somebody was like, hey, we should probably not call them this anymore. <laughs> this don't seem nice. But they're like, you literally, but when you see the betas, they were all in individual little cups because if you no, put them in the same place, they would no fucking good. bite each other. That's like how they renamed Patagonian toothfish Mahi Mahi. And then, uh, then that, which was, which was, I think, good for the fish market, bad for the Patagonian toothfish. <laughs> you know? Is, Be- where is Patagonia? Isn't Patagonia a mountain? I think it's a it's a it's a vest and a location. It's a south. It's a it's a. I think it's a region. It's like a. Right. Oh, wrap it up. The. Uh, <laughs> Listen, if I'm good for anything, it's a tangent. And we're loving it. I'm just here to help. Yeah, man, my book. I talk about dating. Uh, I've been asked recently about dating advice, and it just feels like the blind leading the blind, and somebody's got to be the dog, and. Uh, and that's gonna be. Speaking of, speaking of blind leading blind, you know what we don't know, Brian. You Brian. you Brian. You said before the show that you wanted some advice. Is that right? Yeah, I need some advice. He needs Brian. some. Brian always needs advice. I always need advice. <laughs> you want advice about men? Yeah. From me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, if I went on a date with you in the past week, turn this off. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Hey, spoiler. It's like a like a spoiler. We're no, going no, dancing no, tomorrow. No, no. I'm going to try to seduce you all night. Oh, no, you can go out with multiple people. That's fine. Oh, I know. Uh, so uh, I went on a date with this guy Friday. Mm. We went to a coffee shop. Mm. I thought it goes well. Who paid? Uh, he paid. Because uh, I was not going to be interested if you didn't say that. But go ahead. Uh, good. I deserve it. Um, and so uh, we were talking on Hinge, and so after the date, I messaged him my number, and he doesn't reply for the rest of the day. Mm. And I was like, oh, I guess I missed the situation. I guess like, uh, I liked him more than me. Rare. Uh, and mm. I wake up the next day to a message from him that says, hey, you're very cute, correct? You're really easy to talk to, of course. Mm. Uh, but there was no spark. And I was like, oh. Okay. I was like, I did misread the situation. And I take rejection incredibly well. Uh, so I said, uh, okay, that's fine. If you ever want to go to a play, we talked about theater a lot, let me know. Mm. He immediately replies, I would absolutely love that. Oh, he want to be friends. Yes. Fuck that. So, so I say, well, wait, wait, wait. So I say, this is going to sound like a trap, but I have two tickets to Sweeney Todd on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Brian, Jesus <laughs> <And> I, Christ. <laughs> Just you were, hey, sorry. I have the floor. Uh, <laughs> I like Brian. And, and, he, and he was like, I'm falling for the trap. Let's do it. And I was like, uh, and then, so we go back and forth. I'm flirting about how I'm going to trap him on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. He's uh, playing ball. Uh, and he's like, you know, Valentine's Day is really far away. Do you want to hang out before then? And he, I say, sure. He's like, let's get the dogs together for a play date. And I was like, okay. Is that gay for sex? I wish. <laughs> I have a lot of doggy play dates. <laughs> um, and, um, and so, yeah, sure. I was like, sure. I work from home Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And he was like, let's do Monday. And I was like, you are a little eager beaver for someone who didn't feel a spark. And then he texted me today, and then we have this, uh, not date, doggy play date. I mean, we spent four hours at a coffee shop. He could have left at any time. And then today he asked me if I want to go dancing tomorrow. Oh, no. You made a friend, dog. <laughs> you made a friend. Legitimately. Okay. The man already told you there's no spark. So y'all want to, ooh. <laughs> you made a friend. And please do not think that you didn't. I'm telling you, as somebody who just quit talking to somebody who has been talking to me for months because they just because I was nice to him in a moment. And he never wanted to see my lady parts. He just wanted, and so his dick was on my phone, but he knew that if I didn't see no dick, I wouldn't have kept talking to him. <laughs> because I wouldn't. The last thing I need is more fucking friends. You work from home Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We did it. <laughs> <laughs>